So with the release of the Roroni Kenshin prequel that's now on Netflix, titled Roroni Kenshin The Beginning, a lot of people have been asking me what's the correct order to watch all five films in. So I'm going to give you every option, giving you the pros and cons, and then give you my personal favorite too. So the first option is in chronological order. This is the order in how the films release. First we have Origins, then we have Kyoto Inferno, then The Legend Ends, The Final, and then The Beginning. So the good thing about this order is, this is the order in which the films were made and released in. Though technically, The Final and The Beginning were filmed at the same time. So this is basically the order in which the studio wants us to watch the films in. The best thing about watching it in this order is that you finish all the films with the beginning. And that's ending things on a high note as that's the best film in the series. The bad thing about this order is despite the beginning being the best film in the series, that doesn't really change the fact that it's still a prequel to all the other films. So when you get the flashback scenes in the preceding film, the final, it actually spoils this movie by a lot and this undercuts the beginning's tragedy-filled emotion. The next order is my personal favorite. This one goes Origins, Kyoto Inferno, The Legend Ends, The Beginning, and then The Final. This is my personal choice, and it's the order that I recommend everyone watch these films in. So technically, the Kenshin films are both a trilogy and a duology. One is about the fallout of Kenshin's actions during the war, and the other is about personal fallout. With this order, it keeps them grouped by theme. By swapping the beginning with the final, it makes the latter a much stronger film. The final confrontation between Anishi and Kenshin now has much more weight. Anishi's goals and Kenshin's inner demons now make much more sense coming fresh out of the beginning. And this also allows you to feel much more emotion for both Anishi and Kenshin. It also ends things nicely, showing you how they started and how they ended back to back. The only bad thing about this order is that now it's not going to end with the best movie. The final was a decent film, but it's definitely a step down from the beginning. This means that now it's not going to end as strongly as it would if the beginning was the final film you saw in the series. And the last order is the manga order. This order is based on how the films would be played if it was going by the original source material which is the manga. This one goes Origins, Kyoto Inferno, The Legend Ends, The Final but the first half of the film, The Beginning, and then The Final, the second half of the film. So this means that halfway through The Final when Kenshin tells his friends the story of his past, at that point is when you stop watching this film and then you watch the beginning instead. And then you go back and finish the final. This is actually how the events of the beginning were told in the original manga. Doing it this way keeps the mystery of Kenshin's origins hidden until the very last second, putting you right in the shoes of the characters that are learning about Kenshin's shocking past for the first time. It also makes the final battle between Anishi and Kenshin have the maximum amount of weight. So the bad thing about this is, while the films are part of the same series and have the same director, the beginning looks and feels a lot different from the rest of the films. In the beginning, everything is darker, it's bleaker, and it's much more realistic. There's almost no wire fighting or crazy anime stunts. It's basically just a realistic account of Roni Kenshin, and it's the reason why this one is my favorite film out of all of them. It depicts Kenshin as just a guy that's just really good at killing. The final unfortunately has way too many anime attacks and leaps of faith. Kenshin almost acts like he's a superhuman at times, and i much rather him be more realistic like a real person. But when you intercut these two films, it ends up clashing and it looks very uneven and messy. So in the end, I think the best option is to split the series in half, grouping it by themes. And that's my personal favorite order. With this order, it groups the films based on the arc 
in which the story is being told. The final will now have a much more emotional impact like it should have, and this will end the series on a strong note. The only real reason though I recommend this over the manga order is because if you were to do that, it would turn the last two films into a gigantic 5 hour long Snyder Cut of Aroni Kenshin. And some of you might actually think that sounds awesome, but this order also pulls you out of the story and you're gonna have to switch films mid-movie and honestly I can't picture anyone doing that. But I mean, if none of those things bother you, then you might want to give it a try. This way, you're going to see the story based on the original source material. But regardless of what order you watch them in, just be sure to give the Veroni Kenshin live action film series a watch, because it's in my opinion the best live action adaptation of a manga or anime that I've ever seen. So Rurouni Kenshin the final and the beginning are currently streaming right now on Netflix so if you have that go check them out. If not you could get the original trilogy on SamuraiDVD.com with a bunch of other samurai movies that you can't really get anywhere else. Anyway, thanks for watching.